So my name is Lee Henchman, as Mark likes to point out, it started my 45th year with IBM. Uh, my traditional job as an installation planning rep is to provide service to our clients for all IBM equipment, space, power, cooling, cabling, delivery, all that type of, that's my traditional job. But really the larger part of my job um, is doing data center, uh, consulting design. I've worked with Brunspack for over 30 years on all kinds of design build consulting projects and, and more recently getting into a lot of uh, cable design. Um, so my presentation is going to have a lot of facts and figures. We're going to show some costs, which I always struggle to get when I'm trying to figure something out. I can never get people to tell me what it costs. So it's going to be a little tedious, um, a little boring. I think there's a lot of facts and figures, but uh, We'll, we'll go, run through it. So the agenda is, I'm gonna give a little bit of a background of how we came up with all this information that you're going to see. And then part one is comparing disk, tape, and flash storage solutions in the implication of that in cost and uh, infrastructure to a data center. And then in the second part, this is a uh, very, very recent project, and these are actual costs. Uh, lots of facts and figures of cable types and numbers and and, and pictures. And uh, you know, you, as as Mark says, you can put any questions out there, and we'll answer them at the end. So the background is, for this presentation, I went to a lot of IBM technical sales reps. Uh, other equipment manufacturer sales reps. I interviewed them to gather the data that you're seeing in this presentation, comparing physical data center space and utility costs for tape disk and flash system solutions. Uh, regarding the disk and flash, the configurations reflected in these models are not typical configurations is what uh, some of my storage top gun salespeople want to point out, but rather extreme examples of usable capacity could be installed in a rack. What I'm saying there is these are full racks of disk. So, you know, it's not typical, but it is feasible. And so everything you see in these comparisons will uh, be indicative of a full rack. And then in part two, the cost analysis detailed in the IT infrastructure part of this presentation is from a statement of requirements project that was just completed um, with IBM and Brunspack in September of this year. So very, very current costs. So part one, comparing the space requirements for power cooling for various backup storage solutions. So you'll see consistency here all the way through. And to start with, I'm comparing a 40 petabyte capacity solution. And this is, for anyone not familiar with it, this is an IBM tape library, two frames and a robot goes up and down on a track in here grabs a tape cartridge, puts it in a drive, reads it, puts it back. The tape uh, library cartridges are double stacked, double uh, stacked inside here. And it's like a Pez dispenser. It takes one out and pops another one in and then it put, it's just always moving tapes around. So this solution, two frames, it can be a single frame. It can go up to 18 frames as you see. This is 45 square feet of space with this service clearance um, overlaid onto a two foot raised floor. This is a 40 petabyte solution of spinning disc. So this disc, this is 12 racks, standard 24 inch by 48 inch deep racks. And this is what the component looks like. Again, these racks are full and this takes up 260 square feet of space as opposed to 45 square feet and that's the disk solution. And it's not, it, to make sure this is kind of an apples to apples for people, um, we, there's a lot of high end enterprise disk and then there's a lower end, just a bunch of JBOD disk. And this is the lower end disk, which is typically used in the backup. So we're really trying to, I'd really try to keep it as apples to apples. Then this is a 40 petabyte solution of a flash storage, flash arrays. So this is just a rack and a half, even though Obviously you need the second rack, 45 square feet, matching the tape um, in, in the layout. So this is one and a half racks, 40 petabytes, 
And that's what the flash storage looks like. Now here's where it gets interesting. And I guess it's probably better to go across here. So we're 45 square feet for the tape. It's 0.5 kW per cabinet. The disc 12 cabinets is 260 square feet. It's 17 kW per cabinet. And the flash storage back to the 45 one and a half cabinets, 12.4 kW per cabinet. So the overall 40 petabyte solution is one kilowatt of power for tape, 204 kilowatts of power for disk and 22 kilowatts of power for flash storage. And when we equate that to air conditioning, it's a third of a ton, it's 58 tons of AC and it's six and a half tons of AC. Then we get into the parts that, you know, are uh, four pole positions in the breaker panel, um, very minimal power whips to the tape solution, 72 poles, couple panels in the disc solution in the uh, disc solution and 12 breaker poles in the uh, uh, flash panel and the flash uh, solution. And then this just details the whips in approximate cost, 215 amp single phase power whip, 600 bucks, 24, 60 amp three phase whips, 14,400 bucks, and four 60 amp three phase power whips, $2,400. <clears throat> and this, what you're going to see when we go to the uh, next comparison, is, is a pretty uh, major cost. At 15 cents a kilowatt, I live in Connecticut where we have very high uh, cost and I know other areas of the country do as well. Some of you may have less or more, but at 15 cents a kilowatt, it's $1,781 a year to follow the um, power the tape solution. It's $363,355 and for the disc and for the flash, it's just under $40,000. Now. These numbers are not only the power to power the devices, it's also to remove the heat that the devices generate. So it's input power to power the racks and the power that it takes to cool the exhaust coming off of the racks. So there's pretty phenomenal difference between the solutions. What I did next was I maxed out while, while certainly 360 petabytes is not your typical data center storage. I know storage usage is going up a lot, but you know, this is just gonna show the extreme. Um, so this is the same tape library, which maxes out at 18 frames. So there's two robots in here running up and down moving tapes. And this takes up 445 square feet. This solution requires a, a, a floor uh, level to within, I think, a half an inch over the, the run of the tape library. But this is 18, this is a maximum. And it's the reason it's 360 petabyte for the next two analysis as well is because that's the max that this does. It's roughly 20 petabytes a frame. To go into the disk solution, now we get into 108 racks, 955 square feet. And here's the layout of the equivalent amount of disk for 360 petabytes of capacity of disk, spinning disk storage. Now we go to flash. It's down to 310 square feet and 13 racks. And so you'll see, you know, huge difference in space. But as was with the 20, uh, 40 petabyte, the tape and the disk. And now in this case, the flash even takes up less room than the tape solution. But now we go back to the, now we go back to the numbers. The 445 square feet for the tape, 955 for the disc and only 310 for the flash. Nine kilowatts, 1,836 kW and 186 kW, three tons of air conditioning, 522 tons of air conditioning and 53 tons. So now you start to see the, incredible difference. And I, I just scaled it to the back so that it really stands out. 40 pole positions in the breaker panels, 648, which I think is about uh, 15 and a half panels, according to my notes here. And then 78 pole positions, a couple panels here. 20, 15 amp single phase power whips, about 6,000 bucks. 216, three phase 60 power whips, 130,000 bucks. And then for the flash, it's a fit down to 15,600. And this is the phenomenal number at 15 cents a kilowatt, $16,000 a year to power the tape, 360 petabyte solution, 3,270,000 for the disc and 331,295 for the flash. So three very different solutions, 
with very different cost, total cost of ownership. <clears throat> lots of figures, lots of facts. So the space requirements, this is just a summary, a couple of notes. One storage system can end up costing over 200 times the operating cost and another of another solution and take up almost six times the floor space. Um, and then, you know, what is the cost per square foot of your data center or your colo facility? That's that it makes just a huge difference. And then analyze your environmental and space costs prior to committing to storage solution. And just as a conclusion to part one, I just say when planning a new new IT hardware, add stakeholders from real estate, facility engineering to your IT team for a holistic view of the total cost of ownership for IT solutions. In my years of planning all kinds of equipment on in all kinds of facilities from you know own data centers to colos to anything you could think of, there's generally just a huge disconnect here. The person ordering the equipment has no idea that it's going to cost them three million dollars compared to you know sixteen thousand. So that's the end of part one, and uh, I'll move on. <clears throat> excuse me, move on to part two. This is an interesting analysis. This is the cost for data center racks, cabinets, pathways, and associated cabling with recent, as I said, September project magnitude costs. And these costs were actually, these were bid. So this isn't a, uh, this is not a guess. Um, so here's the data center that we did all of this analysis for. It's 36 IT racks and uh, 16 network racks with overhead two tier tray, hot containment, pod A, pod B, network B, network A in the MDA. 2,600 square foot data center. This is where it, it gets amazing. So the network racks right here house patch panels, spine and leaf switch fabrics, DMZ servers and firewalls. And these are just some, uh, you know, uh, touristy notes here, but very generous troughs, horizontal cabling within these four post open racks. And as you can see, very large wire managers going north and south. Um, when you get into spine and leaf where everything connects to everything, you get enormous east-west cabling, which is the reason there's troughs at the top, the middle and the bottom of these racks. I didn't want to really get into the whole rack elevation thing. This is just conceptual. I mean, this is actual, but I didn't get into all that, but generous horizontal troughs, vertical wire mesh to accommodate the large amount of east-west patching within the MDA. The, the tray paths are redundant. Um, so from pod A and pod B, from every rack, it has a redundant tray path to the MDA. So you'll see this as an example, here's an IT cabinet. It goes out this way to get to network A, it goes down here, goes to network B. So the cables are completely in redundant overhead paths and that works its way. When you get into the next slide, here's the matching rack in pod B, same thing, comes down a different path and goes into the MDA here and this comes around. So completely redundant cable pass, again, 2,600 square feet and 36 IT racks. So here's the criteria, here's the boring numbers, 2,600 square feet, 36 IT cabinets, 30 inches wide by 48 deep by 45 RU high, okay? 16 four post network racks, 48 inches deep, 260 amp three phase switch managed PDUs per cabinet and two switch managed three phase switch, uh, switch managed PDUs to 10 of the 16 network racks because the other six racks are all patch. So the powered network racks, um, 10 of the 16. And that's the start of the criteria. And here's the rest of it. Two tier over two tier copper overhead 24 inch wide tray system with six inch wide fiber tray sistered right alongside redundant overhead tray pass to the MDA as I as I pointed out and this in each above each rack so we don't use any of the rack space attached to the overhead tray is an 8RU patch panel mounted to the overhead tray system above each of the 36 IT cabinets all of the patch panels that um, match these are inside of the racks in the network row so this is above this is an 8RU overhead patch panel rack above each one of the 36 cabinets. 
And just so that you know what we're comparing, it's copper cabling is CAT 6A, so, so we can do 10 gig over uh, copper for network. CAT 6 for out of band, out of band management, ILO, IDRAC, HMC, all of the out of band is CAT 6. OM4 fiber for the LAN, 10, 40 gig, 100 gig with MPO terminators into cassettes. And OM4 fiber for the SAN as well, for 32 gig SAN again with MPO terminations into cassettes. So that's the basis of the cabling. And then the cable counts. So you can know where these prices are coming from. 48 network A and 48 network B LC duplex connections above each cabinet. 48 SAN A and SAN B du LC duplex above each cabinet as well. 12 CAT 6A, uh, A and B copper, uh, 12A and 12B CAT 6A above each in RJ45 jacks and 24 out of band. So, uh, you know, as is the trend, you see a lot less copper than you used to see where the out of band is actually more than the CAT 6A uh, network connections. So for the summary of the cost, 36 IT cabinets with redundant PDUs, 16 associated network racks with PDUs in 10 of the 16, overhead pathways, redundant from 36 IT cabinets to 16 network racks via redundant paths, all copper fiber cabling, including patch panels, LIUs, wire managers, and supporting equipment. So everything in that MDA and those 16 network racks is included in this cost. And this cost is for materials and labor. Um, and what I did is I made, I did the cost of just per each of the 36 IT cabinets, because obviously the 16 network cabinets support the IT cabinet. So just, just to show the point, the cost for the IT infrastructure, cabinets, network racks, PDUs, overhead tray system, and cabling was $2,700,000 or $75,000 per IT cabinet based on the 36 cabinets. So the 36 cabinets, with all its supporting network racks and tray and everything else came out to $75,000, <clears> excuse me, per cabinet. And that excludes the power whips that are feeding the rack. So no IT equipment is in the room yet. You've built the room, you've put in some nice cabinets in all your infrastructure, not one piece of gear, you're at $75,000 a cabinet. I did this a number of years ago after I finished a, a large bank project up in Buffalo. And I think back then it was 45,000 and uh, which I thought was amazing. And so this is a, a good refresh of those numbers. Quite simply, because I've seen this in my uh, decades of work, do not overlook budgeting for your IT infrastructure when planning your new data center. When the IT infrastructure costs are introduced late or at the end of the project, which I've seen many times, they are generally not received very well you know, a little tongue in cheek. And many times the IT infrastructure is reduced uh, due to an underfunded data center design build model. So make sure these costs as part of your statement of requirements, which I do many projects with Brunspack on, <clears throat> you build these in up front, there's no surprises. And then when people ask for a certain density of cabling, you're, you know, you can tell them here's the cost before they get too carried away with how much cabling they really need. So this, I'm just gonna blast through quickly here. This is the appendix. And just for the real uh, people that wanna drill into the weeds here, this is the description of the hardware used in the comparison. So this is the tape library. These are the facts and figures and model types so that you know you can, you can see it's 20 petabytes per frame. This is how this was derived. This is from actual configurations put through many tools that uh, we use at IBM to configure equipment. The, uh, oops, sorry, the, oops, this one. Here is the disk system, and this is the type of disk and the density of the disk in all the details. If you wanna try to compare something that you may be working with, and that's 3.3 petabytes per rack. That's what that comes out to. And then here's the flash system that I used. And these are in 42E racks. This is a FS5100, uh, blah, 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 all the machine types, the modules, the data reduction, 
the effective capacity in that game comes out to 20 seat, 27 petabytes per rack. So that is the end of my presentation.